management. So here at the University of Washington, I'm currently on campus. Before we get started with our program, um, just as part of our relationship with the tribal sovereign nations across the country, and especially within Washington state and our borders, um, we take part to recognize that the University of Washington's campus occupies the traditional lands of the uh, Coast Salish peoples, the land that touches the shared waters of all tribes and bands within the Suquamish, Tulalip, and Muckleshoot nations. Now, while we get started, I do want to set out a few reminders, um, mainly that we do have a Q&A function. So throughout today's program, make sure to ask questions. Um, but please note that we will be answering most of our questions towards the end of today's presentation. I also want to remind everyone that we do have closed captioning available if you'd like to use it. Um, as a reminder, we are going to be recording this session, but also a lot of the information we cover today is going to be available online at the UW admissions website. Now that I've cleared all of our starting points, um, I'm going to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Avalika Makaro. I am an admissions counselor with the Multicultural Outreach and Recruitment Team here at OMAD, or the Office of Minority Affairs and Diversity. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'll hand it off to Alex. Thanks, Velika. My name is Alex Hall. I am an admissions counselor at the Office of Undergraduate Admissions. So. Um, we work definitely in partnership with OMAD, um, and I use he, him pronouns. And then finally, hand it off to Ben. So much. Hey, everyone. My name is Ben Siegel. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm our senior admissions counselor here at the UW. Um, so excited to connect with you all here today, um, talk a little bit more about writing those UW essays. All right. But before digging into the essays themselves, we do want to kind of situate where those essays appear um, and how they're considered as part of our holistic review process. So holistic review process is kind of our way of saying that um, we're looking at lots of different aspects of who you are as a person when reviewing your application. There's no one thing that's going to make or break a student's application. We have these two pillars to holistic review. First pillar being academic preparation performance. We want to make sure that students are prepared to be academically, academically successful here at the UW. And um, when we say academics, we're looking well beyond on a student's GPA. So looking at things like rigor of curriculum, grade trend, what classes you're taking throughout high school, lots of things considered as part of that academic evaluation. Um, today, since we're talking about those essays, we'll, we will be mostly focusing on the personal achievements and characteristics section of that application. I'm um, looking at a few different essays, that's personal statement, short response essay, activity log, as well as a few different additional information sections. But again, holistic review, that's our way of getting to know you as a whole person. Digging a little bit deeper into that personal achievements and characteristics section, um, I'd say these bullet points are things that we consider as part of that a personal achievement and characteristic review. In no way is this an exhaustive list. Um, we're looking well beyond just these bullet points, but definitely things to consider when um, applying to the UW and writing your essays. Um, I'm gonna go through those essays one by one here as it can help a little bit to best understand um, what we're looking for and how you can communicate these aspects of yourself. But our first essay is that personal statement, really our opportunity to get to know students. Um, kind of what are those traits, characteristics, life experiences that have shaped you know who you are as a person. We'll unpack that essay prompt in a little bit more detail there. Um, again, across those essays, students can definitely touch on um, community service, leadership, um, all, all sorts of those different pieces as part of that personal statement or other essays as well. Um, leading to our second essay, which again, we will unpack a little bit later here, but that short response essay, that one's really focused on community um, and asking students to reflect on the communities that they come from. So I think that bottom bullet point says it pretty well, but here at the UW, um, we take pride in having a campus community of folks from a wide variety of backgrounds, perspectives, viewpoints. So that short response essay is a great way to highlight um, those aspects of yourself. And again, those can show up across personal statement, short response essay, as well as our activity log. So activity log, you can list up to eight activities on there. That could be clubs, sports, jobs, volunteer work. Um, could also be um, activities that aren't necessarily documented, for example. And I mean documented, um, that'd be like a sport or a club, for example. You could also list things like family commitment. So if you're like taking care of younger siblings, or translating documents for parents. Absolutely, that is something you can list on an activity log. Um, kind of also plays into our bullet point here regarding significant responsibility. Um, definitely want to value all those things your st students are doing outside the classroom, um, whether it's a documented activity or not. 
Um, the last piece here, and again, we will dig into this much further, but we want to make sure we're best understanding the challenges and adversity students have faced throughout high school, especially as they're pursuing their academics. So, I mean, that could be academic challenges, that could be health, mental health, um, that could be challenges that family had faced, um, be it like socioeconomic, for example. Um, but when we're looking at a student's application, say academics, that doesn't tell the full story about who a student is as a, is as a person and what are those factors that impacted their academics. So we want to provide those additional information sections to allow students to provide that context that allow us to best get to know you as a student and a person as a whole. But again, these are just some of those things we look for across those personal achievements and characteristics section of the application. And we'll unpack those essay prompts in much more depth in a second here. I'm going to just cover really quickly. Um, let's go kind of talk about holistic review. I want to talk about the nuts and bolts, how to apply to the UW. Um, you will apply through an online application. We intend to join the common application this upcoming year, but we'll also have our own UW application platform available. Um, but you're going to submit an online application, one or the other there. Um, the first key component of that online application is self-reporting your coursework. So a little bit unique here at the UW, we don't ask for transcripts. The way we're understanding your academics is self-reported coursework. Um, as I just kind of unpacked a little bit further there, we have those different writing sections, that activity log, uh, personal statement, short response essay. So those are those key essay components there. Um, application fee here at the UW is $80 for US applicants, $90 for international applicants. However, we do offer fee waivers. So if you qualify for, say, free and reduced lunch at your high school, you will qualify for a fee waiver here at the UW. Um, just before we kind of move forward in the presentation, just a few things we do not consider. Again, no need to send us transcripts is the first piece. We do not consider letters of recommendation either. So no need to send us those letters of rec. We're really going to be focused on your essays, which we'll talk about today. Um, and last but not least, SAT and ACT scores are no longer considered. So that's just my very quick little overview here about how to apply, where those essays will show up in the application itself. But I want to make sure we're digging deeper into those essays themselves right now. Perfect. I'll pick it up from here. As Ben had said, we do intend to join the Common App. I mean, if you're familiar with the Common Application or uh, perhaps another uh, sort of larger application like the coalition application, they have their own essay prompts. And so if you are using the Common App or the coalition application, which to be clear, we are not on the coalition application this year, um, but if you're using one of those, uh, you will have certain essay prompts that they will ask you to do. Uh, we have our own essay prompts. And so if you are applying to the University of Washington, uh, you are going to submit one longer response and one shorter response. I'm going to go through what those are right now, um, but I know we might uh, get some questions about this and we're going to have plenty of time to go over questions at the end of today's session, uh, but we are reviewing our prompts, um, not necessarily the, the Common App prompts. So even if you do write a Common App essay, um, you are going to, we are only going to consider uh, the two prompts that I'm talking about right now. So the longer, this is the longer one. Tell a story from your life describing an experience that either demonstrates your character or help to shape it. This is very broad. Um, and so if you are familiar with the Common App um, or some of the Coalition App prompts, um, they can be as broad as this. Um, so telling a story from your life, that could include, um, as Ben had said, it, it could include a story about overcoming adversity. It could be a story about uh, teamwork or leadership or something you're really passionate about, um, but it's it's experience focused. And so we want to hear a cohesive narrative focused on an experience that can hopefully uh, give us a con give us concrete evidence that you have some of these personal qualities and characteristics that Ben just talked about. So this one's a lot broader. The short response, uh, even though it's shorter, the prompt is actually longer um, and it is a little bit more specific. So I'll, I'll read into it right now. Our families and communities often define us in our individual worlds. Community might refer to your cultural group, extended family, religious group, neighborhood or school, sports team or club, coworkers, et cetera. Describe the world you come from and how you as a product of it might add to the diversity of the University of Washington. So this one has a 300 word maximum. I'm not going to get into too much about the tips to write these essays just yet, because Abelica is going to talk about that in a few minutes. But I do want you to see that um, they are fairly different responses in terms of length uh, and the prompt that it's asking you. So, you know, we are expecting to see fairly different responses from you for uh, for what you give us. For this one, 
as you might be able to see, you are, uh, you're asked to think about how you can contribute to the diversity of the University of Washington. So diversity is a, is a key word here, um, but that means something different to everybody. And so thinking about another experience or maybe set of experiences that you have, um, we're giving you some guidelines like extended family, neighborhood, coworkers, um, but you can definitely broaden that out as well. Um, but it is more specifically asking about uh, culture, diversity, and questions like that. Now, those are the two mandatory responses. So 650 word maximum on the longer one, the broader one, 300 words on the shorter one, the more specific one. However, there is additional information that you can provide us. Um, if you were applying uh, through the University of Washington application, like our own application, or you're applying through the Common App, you're going to have an opportunity to answer some of these questions. You do not need to. These are not mandatory questions to answer, but if you'd like, um, there's several tips that I, I have about um, when to know how to fill it, like when to fill out these uh, the, these questions, how to fill them out, what kind of information goes in there. Typically speaking, on any application um, or most applications across the country, including ours, uh, you're going to see an additional information section and then another section that's either titled uh, community disruption or disaster response or pandemic response or something like that. So the additional information section is mostly for academic or um, other, you know, uh, maybe extracurricular limitations, things like that. And typically these are not going to have to do with um, COVID effects or um, effects of disasters or kind of things uh, of that nature. So this would be a good opportunity to talk about, for instance, um, my school doesn't offer certain AP classes or IB classes, or um, I couldn't take uh, this class this year because of this reason. It could also be a good way to describe uh, perhaps things that we wouldn't be able to see just by looking at your uh, self-reported coursework and grades. For instance, maybe if we're seeing a dip in um, grades for a certain year or a certain class, this could be a good opportunity to explain that. Um, perhaps it's something that academically was happening. It's something uh, personally that was happening. This is your opportunity to explain this. Um, it's not a place for resumes, links, um, uh, portfolios, anything like that. Uh, we're not going to consider any additional documents like that, um, but it is a good place to talk about um, some contextual things that we would not be able to see uh, without you writing something. The other one is the community disruption section. And this is specifically about COVID and, and other disasters, um, kind of things of, of large magnitude like that. Um, so it, it, could, it could be, you know, you or, or someone in your family was affected by COVID directly. It could be indirectly. Um, it doesn't have to be COVID. It could be a wildfire, a landslide, something um, that has affected you or your community um, that you think is relevant to your application. Um, and this could be uh, you weren't able to take certain tests or you weren't able to take certain classes because of, of COVID, um, COVID restrictions at your school, personal COVID um, limitations or restrictions. Um, but this section was widely adopted by colleges in 2020 as a response to the pandemic. So um, some colleges have asked about kind of disaster response before this. Uh, but if you're wondering why are there two sections, it's because uh, this new section uh, has really, for most colleges, only two or three years old. Um, the main thing here is thinking about significant personal adversity. Um, you are absolutely fine in the additional information section if you want to give us a little bit more clarity on classes and schedules and things like that, especially since we're not going to be able to see that information from a counselor since we don't consider letters of recommendation. But I would definitely be... Um, I would, be, I would be selective with the amount of information that you provide and additional information, community disruption. Um, so think about things that are relevant for us to know, and especially things, uh, significant personal adversity that doesn't really fit in your essays, but you think is still relevant. Um, feel free to, to talk about it here, um, but I would be selective. Um, this is not necessarily a place just to write, um, you know, another 650, um, 700 word essay. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Avelka. Thanks. Um, okay, so 
now you're thinking, okay, I know all the things that I have to write. I know that I have to do longer personal statement, maybe a short response, and then potentially all these additional information sections. Where do I even start? Um, so we've kind of provided this guideline um, of questions to ask yourself, you know, really seeing, okay, who am I as a person? What is the story I want to tell? Literally part of the prompt um, and figuring out, you know, how does that fit into my goals here at the University of Washington and really just generally your goals in, for college, um, especially considering the fact that these essays, we do want you to reuse them, especially your longer personal statement. It is something that you're putting a lot of work into. Reuse that essay for all the colleges you're applying to, please. Um, but just to get started, where did you come from? This is kind of easy answer, kind of maybe not. You can think of it in a really philosophical way, but generally, you know, what's your hometown like? What is your high school like? What's your family like? Your culture maybe? Um, just start thinking about, you know, what is what is the thing that I'm going to be carrying with me to the University of Washington? This is not only going to help with the short response, trying to think about, you know, what does my community look like, but also generally if that personal statement, you're not sure where to start in that story, this is a good place. Start thinking also about what obstacles you've overcome. You know, generally we like to think of adversity being this really crazy dramatic event. Please remember you do not have to write a really in-depth trauma essay. Always feel comfortable with whatever you're writing. You do not have to go deep. You also don't have to give us the saddest story in the world. Um, it's whatever obstacles you feel um, best show your diligence um, and especially how you, you know, are able to work past adversity. Um, so this could be something, you know, maybe you broke your arm and you figured out a different way to, you um, you know, to work in school, maybe you uh, failed a class or maybe you failed a test and you were able to work up to getting that A that you really wanted. Um, it could also be something that is a little bit more personal. You know, maybe you don't have a great relationship with your siblings. Trying to find ways to find community and find friendship outside of that relationship can also be a way to overcome that obstacle. Um, the third question is what connects you to your community? So you start thinking of it, okay, I have this obstacle. Maybe the thing that connects me to my community is my answer. Um, this could be any type of community. Um, the ones that we listed in the short response are definitely a good way to think of it. Um, but again, your community is where you're finding your passion. It's where you're spending most of your time. It's also maybe something that you want to continue um, at college or maybe something that you're gonna be really sad to miss when you move on to your next steps in life. And then finally, the fourth question, where do you see yourself in the future? This should be an easy one. I see myself at the University of Washington. I see myself graduating from high school, um, but it can also be a bit more in depth. I really want to take this specific class or I want to work in this really intense field or I want to go do study abroad or I want to just leave my hometown or maybe you want to go back to your hometown in the future. Um, maybe, you know, you want to support your family. There's a lot of different ways to answer all these questions. The reason why we put them up as kind of your general guide um, and it's to help you figure out an outline for your essay. Uh, maybe if you've started your essay, think if you've answered these questions. Um, they do tell us a lot more about you. Remember, context is key when it comes to these essays. So moving on to the next slide, if you're not sure where to start or maybe you really just need to figure out your essay topic because you have two essay topics now that you have to figure out, um, these are just some options of things that we think are broad enough, but also will be able to answer those questions. I really recommend everyone take a screenshot or write down three topics that interest them the most or that they think they can answer the best in their essays. So obstacles or challenges, obviously that's an easy one if you're answering the third question, but again, make it personal to yourself. Um, think about challenges that you've really had to work around or challenges that maybe you carry with you every single day as well. Um, special interests, this is something that, again, you just find joy with or maybe something that you really love doing every single day um, or maybe something that you just very weirdly know a lot of things about. Um, I always get an essay every single year without fail about people who are really into model trains, which is something that I don't know anything about, but it's really interesting because every time I've read this essay or I've read an essay about this topic, everyone has a different story of how they got into that specific experience, um, you know, why they are really interested in it. Um, people write about Minecraft, Game Boy, you know, there's lots of different options with their special interests. It also could be a club or maybe if you're in drama or in sports, um, this is a good place to think of your topic. 
Social justice experiences and advocacy work. This is really important, especially for students who are planning to stay involved or really want to go into policy making. Um, or if you've been affected by social injustices, um, we really recommend writing about those experiences in your essay. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be the main topic, but it does, again, give us some more information about what your day to day life is like. Short term and long term goals. Again, answering that fourth question um, that we showed in the previous slide. This is really where you want to um, figure out, OK, this is kind of my conclusion. Maybe this is something that I'm working towards or I have been building towards. Significant memories or events, um, I think a good place to start just because, again, we're asking you to tell us a story about your life. Um, but a significant memory event can be just the introduction to your essay. It can also be the whole purpose of your essay. Um, we do, again, want everyone to write about themselves. So if you're talking about a larger world event, um, so for example, with COVID, make sure you're always bringing it back to yourself and how you were particularly affected by that or how you interacted with that experience. Unique qualities or characteristics. Um, this is going to be for students who do have um, maybe a different upbringing. Maybe you're uh, living with a, a physical disability, a mental disability, or a learning disability. That's definitely something that we want to know about because it does give us a better picture of how you able to interact with academics. Um, but also, unique qualities or characteristics could be first generation students, so parents whose are, so children whose parents um, have not attended college. Uh, if you are a migrant worker student, um, if you have an extra job, um, that is your daily task is that you are working right after finishing school. Um, if you are going to be moving to the US, um, tell us about your country, tell us about what your culture is like as well. Um, and tell us, you know, again, just giving us more context to who you are as a person. For leadership skills and development, uh, this is going to be really key to answering kind of that general idea of, okay, who am I as a leader? Where do I have responsibility in my life? This could be, you know, if you're president of club, um, if you are captain of your soccer team, if you've had a lead in a school play, um, but also if you, again, have a job, if you've had to build skills, if you're working towards being a manager um, at your local Starbucks, if there's, you know, something that you have uh, that you're in charge of. Um, I always bring up childcare because I think that that's something that a lot of students do have to do just as an additional task in their family and home life um, that is definitely building up skills and developing um, who you are as a person. And then role models. Um, I really recommend that if students write about role models, just remember for everything that you love about that person or everything that um, inspires you about that person, make sure to connect it about your own experience and how you are actually practicing those skills in your own life. For academic and career projects, um, this is a really good one if you want to focus on um, a particular skill that you've developed, or maybe if there's a class or a uh, major that you're interested in here at UW, um, really finding a way to tie those projects to yourself, um, especially sewing uh, how much hard work that you put into those projects. It's going to be really important. Um, I always do recommend, though, connecting it to what you plan to study here at UW if you do end up using that topic. So generally, um, you know, you see all these different topics. I've gone through and given examples of each one. But remember, try and pick three um, and find ways that they all intersect with each other, I think, to make the most robust personal statement and especially the most robust um, topic possible, uh, just because we know that it's never going to be one single topic that's guiding your entire life, right? It's all of these different things overlapping with each other. Um, because I did theater, I always <laughs> bring it up. But, you know, if I was doing theater, I could talk about, um, you know, maybe there's a particular actress that was my role model. And so I brought up my or a significant memory or event of how this person was brought into my life. And then talk about, you know, leadership skills and development of how I got into drama club um, and was able to work up to, you know, trying to be like her. And that because of that short term, long term goal, I eventually want to study um, theater at University of Washington, you know, trying to find ways to connect to all of these tissues that make you. So moving on to some uh, good essay writing tips. Main thing, please be honest. That is probably going to be the most important thing. Um, I do know that there's all sorts of Reddit pages of things that you should be writing about and ways to make your essay the best. It's always best to just make it come from you. Write out your rough draft. Just 
put it all on paper, um, hopefully use some of the guides that we showed you before, um, but really make it a point to share who you are. This is a personal statement. It's a short response that's asking about you and your community. Um, it can't be copy and pasted from anyone else. It has to come from you. And it does make it more personal. And we can tell, yes, we can actually tell when we're reading your applications. Um, always remember that you want to tell a story, but Remember, if you're telling a story, you also want to make sure that you're reflecting on what that story means to you and why you wanted to tell it, um, not just the what of what it is. Uh, I always put this one in. Please check your spelling and grammar. Just as a personal, I read a lot of essays. Uh, we read a lot of applications as a team. Spelling and grammar is something that it doesn't, you don't get any, like, there's no marks against you. You're not going to get like a failing grade or anything like that. Um, it's just something that helps us as readers go through it. Uh, please make sure to follow the directions for each prompt. Um, even if you are reusing and readapting these essays, just make sure that you're copy and pasting your essay into the right space. Um, we also want to make sure that you know, these essay guides or these essay prompts are useful to you in helping you make a more specific and concise essay. Um, yes, and with that, address all parts of the question. Uh, I always use AP stands for answer the prompt. Same thing here with your personal statements. Um, again, write about yourself and then use your own words. Um, you know, you can use the thesaurus over and over again. You can have a million people give you feedback and tell you that you should write it this way or that. Um, but it does, I think, give a clearer story, a better picture of who you are as a person, and also helps you out with the rest of your essay um, when you use your own words. Ultimately, the personal statement, short response, additional information sections, these are the most controllable aspects of your application. And I really wanna emphasize that you should be using them to your advantage um, to give us more information about, you know, maybe my classroom looks different from the classroom at this other school, or maybe the person sitting next to my class has a lot easier time because they got eight hours of sleep last night where I only got three because I was working so hard, you know, staying up till 2 a.m. finishing an essay um, or finishing a project. Those are the things that we wanna know about in your application. Um, and the writing section is the place to include all that information. So hopefully that helps. Um, we're gonna move on, I'll let Ben take over from here. Perfect. Thanks so much, Avelica. Um, so that, that we just wanted to share some of that more general information. Um, as both Alex and Avelica were talking, I was looking through the questions there, and I'm just trying to grab some trending topics. So we want to open it for Q&A now. Um, I'm going to try to ask more general questions and do my best, best to keep them mostly essay specific. Um, we will try to answer some of those questions you all have regarding like timeline, holistic review more generally, but again, trying to keep this a little bit more specific to the writing section on the application. Um, for our last slide here, before we move on here, we wanted to toss up a picture of our favorite dog. That is Dubs. I'm actually Dubs too. Um, so you're welcome to give him a follow on Instagram if you'd like. Um, see him at football games and whatnot. But more importantly, we have our email addresses and our website listed in the bottom right-hand corner there. So um, reach at uw.edu is the email address for our Multicultural Outreach and Recruitment Office, where Avelica is coming from. And then the Ask UW ADM at uw.edu, that is for our General Office of Admissions. If you have any additional questions regarding like the application process or we're not able to get to your question today, you're more than welcome to email us and we're happy to be of support with those questions. You also can find our general admissions website there. So um, we will drop some links in the chat throughout our Q&A session here today, but you can find our how to apply page for freshman application. You can find our essay prompts there. You can register for campus tours, um, look at cost of attendance, timeline for the application and whatnot. So um, lots of great resources on the website there. Um, but all that being said, um, I do want to open it up to some questions here. Perfect. Thanks, Alex. Good to see you all larger screen here. Um, Alex, I think just to start with, is it all right if I ask you a series of common app questions? Because I think I just want to kind of get those out of the way, make sure we have our nuts and bolts lined up. For sure, yeah. Perfect. I guess kind of the first one, we had some questions regarding um, the UW application versus the common application. If we have a preference, which one students submit? No, we don't. Um, I think it's it should be whatever is most convenient for you. It's gonna be the same price. It's gonna be the same requirements. There's no, um, yeah, there's no preference between the two. Perfect, and can students submit both? Um, we, we want one or the other. Perfect, sounds good. So I guess that's just quick little notes there again. We don't care which one you submit, just be sure to submit one over the other. Um, and then I guess, Alex, a little bit more on the timeline piece there. Some students were asking like when they can add you to their college list on there. Um, I was just wondering if you could speak a little bit more to, um, I guess, how we intend to join the Common App and what students can expect moving forward. 
For sure. Um, and for those who aren't familiar with the Common App, um, you create your profile. It's open now, just the, the regular Common App. Um, so you can sign up, create your profile, and there is a, a section that says My Colleges, um, and that's where you would add all the colleges that you're applying to. Um, we intend to be on there uh, in September. So September 1st was the, um, the date that our, our actual application will open up, like the UW application. Um, unfortunately, because it's um, still in the works, I don't have a definitive date for you for the Common App, but um, if everything goes well, September 1st, um, it's going to be when both open. Perfect. Sounds good. And I guess the last one is, I was wondering if you could just kind of clarify that piece regarding um, what we look for, um, like what essays we will see and what we won't see from the Common Application. For sure. So the two essay prompts, that the essay and the short response prompts that I um, talked about were the only two that we are going to consider for the UW application. The Common App, if you use it, um, if you create your profile, it's going to ask you to write an essay. You will choose one of either seven or eight prompts. Um, as Avalika said, you can absolutely, uh, you know, for the, the Common App, uh, your Common App essay, it can be very similar in nature to that, that larger essay that we're asking for, but we are only um, going to review the two prompts that I had mentioned. We are not going to review your general Common App essay. Sounds good. I think hopefully that kind of captures most of those common application questions. Please feel free to continue to check on our website. Um, I know September 1st is coming up quickly there, but again, our essay prompts are posted on our website. You can start those at any time. Um, and again, we do intend to join the common app and hopefully we will add you to the school shortly here. Um, Avelica, we were getting some questions kind of regarding direct admission and how to communicate that as part of the essays. Um, so I guess I'm going to ask you, I guess, two questions. I mean, first, um, do the departments read the applications um, and do students need to talk about their interest in a major as part of their essays? Is that considered for direct admission? Yeah, so while we do have some faculty um, and staff from other departments on our uh, review team when it comes to reading the applications, uh, we are actually the only ones who review your application. So uh, there's an admissions team that does all the application reviews. We're going to be the ones that read your application. We are ultimately the ones who help make the decision for admission to those majors. Um, but for the second question, when it comes to uh, writing about your interest in those specific programs, that's definitely not a requirement. We do have a question in the application um, ahead of this section that asks, what is your first choice major? And then what is your second choice major? Those are ultimately going to be the places where um, you know, that help us figure out where to put you in the programs. Um, so definitely, if you are interested in a direct major, put that as your first choice major and then put something else as your second choice major, whatever that interest is. You can write about it in your essay, um, but as Kayla, who is one of our um, computer science uh, counselors, she always recommends that, you know, we don't really know everything. Um, the admissions team is very diverse, but we also don't know everything that there is to know about these specific programs. So it's much more important to, you know, if you are writing about a special interest, write about that because that's important to you and that's something that you care about. Um, but don't think that you absolutely need to write about those to be admitted to those majors. Perfect. Thanks so much, Avelica. Um, Alex, for kind of a next question, um, question regarding like mental health. Um, I think a student was asking like, where can they write about that in their application? Um, and would that be seen as a positive or a liability? Yeah, um, thank you for that. Um, so there's really anywhere in the application um, in, in terms of like the essay writing section, but that being said, where a student chooses to talk about uh, things like mental health, um, maybe even physical health, uh, it can shift and, and depend based on how you want to talk about it. And it can be multiple places too. For instance, in your, um, your longer, response. Maybe there is a particular story or experience that you want to communicate about that subject that you think would be really relevant to you being a student at UW. Um, perhaps for the shorter response, um, that plays a role in um, your, your diversity and how you would add to the diversity of the University of Washington. And for the additional information section or even the COVID and disaster response section, perhaps there's additional contextual information um, that we would need to know. So it's not necessarily like you're writing a narrative, um, but it's just additional information that we would need to know. So it, it does depend um, for sure. One thing that I do like to say, and it, it can apply to mental health as opposed to all sorts of other subjects too, it's something to keep in mind. 
several states, including Washington, are mandatory reporting states. What this means is if there is, if we are able to see um, from a minor, so somebody younger than 18, evidence of uh, abuse or neglect, then we are technically required to report it to state reporting agencies. Uh, I was in Pennsylvania, they're the same way, Colorado is the same way, Washington is the same way. So do keep that in mind if you're thinking about essay topics. Um, you can absolutely write about those things for sure, but do know that state laws, um, some mandatory reporting laws uh, can affect kind of how that information gets passed on. Thanks so much, Alex. Um, Avelka, for the next question, someone asked about where they can include information about being first generation. Um, and I think it may be helpful since we have a large audience, maybe if you're willing to define what first generation means at the UW, um, and again, what, where and how students could include that information in their application. Yeah, so um, first, a first generation student is any student who's has both parents who did not complete a four-year degree. So maybe they uh, completed an AA or community college degree or were in the process of completing a four-year degree, but ultimately did not receive that bachelor's degree. Um, and that requires for both parents for a student to be considered first generation. Um, so that's one. And we do see that information in the parents information section on your app. Um, so we'll be able to see it either way. Where it does come in handy, I think, to write about it is especially if that's affected you when it comes to schooling, um, when it generally comes to college access, so maybe not knowing what resources are available to you or maybe even where to start when it comes to the application. That's where we'd like to see it. Um, I think the same thing with mental health. It really just depends on where you would want to put it in those essays. Um, I think particularly if it is something that has affected you, or maybe has affected your pathway to college. I think particularly for students who maybe are first generation um, and have to do everything on their own where there's not really someone that they can reach out to within their own family or maybe them being the only ones going to college or being the only ones um, trying to go to college is something that's not really common in your family or community. That's definitely where we'd want to see you write about it in your personal statement or especially in that community response section. Um, in additional information, uh, it really just depends on how much that's affected you. Um, I always think also when students consider themselves first generation, um, particularly if it's affected finances, remember that that's also a socioeconomic experience. Um, so that would be something to include if you do want to write about that in your essays. There we go. Thanks so much, Avelica. Um, I'm going to really quick housekeeping note on the recordings of the sessions. Um, they'll be posted on our website, um, probably roughly within like a few days to a week after the session itself. So you can find those on our website. Um, we just want to make sure we get all those captions on. They're all good to go. Um, but they will be recorded. Um, we don't, um, I guess, send out the slides themselves, but the recording with the slides will be on our website shortly here. Um, and let me see, for my next question here, um, Alex, I'm just going to toss this your way and maybe not as quite, um, or not related to essays, but we did get a lot of questions regarding SAT or ACT score policy. I just wonder if you could speak to that um, to help um, just folks understand how that is um, considered in our review process. Yeah, so we don't, um, in the vast, vast majority of cases, we don't consider SAT or ACT scores, even if you submit them. So you might hear from certain schools, if you ask a counselor, I'm, we're test optional. So you don't have to send in your test scores, but if you do, we'll consider them. We go one step further and say, even if you send in your test scores, we're most likely not going to consider them as part of the admission process. There are certain cases where we could consider uh, SATs or ACTs, but it's never going to disadvantage an applicant. Um, in fact, it's usually when somebody wasn't selected um, initially, uh, but then we're looking at kind of at the end of the process and saying, okay, this person has uh, a really high test score. So either um, it's a 31 or above for the ACT or a 1400 composite or above for the SAT. So if you have that, um, in some cases, uh, you could get um, additional consider, you know, basically one additional um, uh, read. Um, but this has only happened in 0.3% of cases last year. 99.7% of all the applications that we read last year, test scores were not considered ever. And your first admission reader is never going to, to consider your test score. So it really only happens kind of at the end of the process. That being said, um, then the community disruption or the, the COVID um, section of your application, um, even though we don't consider test scores, that is something that you can feel free to write about. I know that um, perhaps 
not as much for the students that were that are applying this year, but perhaps this is the case. You weren't able to take SATs or ACTs because of the pandemic. That's absolutely something that you can write about. For us, it's really not going to matter as much. But if you want to share that information, that would qualify as you know a, a disaster or COVID response for sure. Okay, thank you so much, Alex. I appreciate that. Um, Avelika, for our next question, I was wondering if you could um, just speak very briefly about the difference between the freshman and transfer application. Um, I know our presentation today was like very um, freshman centric um, in terms of the prompts and what we're looking for there. I think there was some transferable information, but um, Avelika, if you'd be willing to speak to like how we define a freshman and a transfer, maybe for some running start students out there as well as kind of how that transfer process differs briefly, that would be awesome. Yeah. So. Um with the transfer and freshman application. One thing to note, if you have taken community college classes, but you have not graduated from high school, you are considered a freshman applicant. So transfer by our definition is any student that has completed community college or um, you know, college level coursework after graduating high school. Um, so just making sure that that's out there. Uh, secondly, when, the way it works between our freshman application, for UW, we use just the single general application that opens September 1st, closes November 15th. Um, that is the only time to apply as a freshman applicant. You'll do so during your senior year. So fall of your senior year is when we receive applications. Um, and then you hear back at the spring of your senior year. For transfer students, it works a little bit differently um, because you do have a bit of rolling admissions here. Uh, we have three separate timelines. So you can apply as winter transfer applicant, spring transfer applicant, and a summer or fall transfer applicant. Those are all in uh, one application cycle. Um, you'll not only complete a UW application, the general application for transfer students, but then also you have to complete an application to your major of interest. Um, and you can apply to as many majors as you want in addition to that UW general transfer application. Um, I know that's a lot of info for those of you who are not planning on applying as a transfer, but I do think it's important to note if there is anyone in the audience. Generally speaking, uh, for the transfer application, we do have personal statement sections. Um, however, they are a bit shorter, uh, or excuse me, longer in length, uh, about a thousand words for those um, essays. And I, while I'm talking about the timeline for essays, please make sure to note that you cannot go or you should not go over that 650 or 300 word maximum limit. That's really important to note because we actually don't see anything after that maximum word limit. So just please note that for the additional information sections, both of those sections have 250 words as their max limit. Um, so just keep in mind, you do have to be brief. I know it sounds like a lot that you have to write. Um, remember, the additional information sections are optional. Um, but for those two required ex essay spaces, uh, we do want you to stay within that word limit. So be concise. Again, get feedback. Really helpful. Um, and I do see a question. Just I know that you're monitoring, Ben, but I wanted to answer this beforehand. Um, it's a question about reusing the essays. I mentioned earlier, please reuse your essays. Um, I think a student here mentioned that there's a flagging if it's there that it's plagiarized if you resubmit the same essay to more than one university. Um, we don't interact with the other universities. It actually goes for you to Bothell and UW Tacoma. We don't see the applicants um, or any of the applications that go to those different universities or colleges. What we do see, however, is if an applicant or if we receive the same type of essay, like same exact essay from multiple students, that's where you would be flagged for plagiarism. So again, use your own words, make sure it's your own essay when it comes to these spaces. Um, but please reuse those essays. It's a lot of work and we definitely don't want you to like be writing a thousand different essays all to the same universities. I would say too, though, if your essay is like, and that's why I want to go to CSU Northridge. I mean, I would probably edit that part. I know, absolutely. I always get the ones where my dream schools, Washington State University, University of Oregon. So again, we're still going to read your essay, still could be admitted, but uh, always, always fun. Um, we're I'm all start... like, hmm, <laughs> when it comes to those ones. <laughs> Um, I'm going to tackle one question super quick and then I'm going to toss one to Alex here. I saw some questions about like difference between UW Bothell, Tacoma, and Seattle, um, as well as the application processes. Um, prior to working at UW Seattle, I actually worked at UW Bothell and all three UW campuses, they're part of the University of Washington system. They all grant University of Washington degrees. Um, just going to be different terms, differences in terms of size, location, and major is kind of the big thing. Um, in terms of the application process, you do need to apply to each school separately, um, and those admissions decisions are independent from one another. So you can be admitted 
admitted at one school, waitlisted at another, denied at another UW campus. So if you're interested in the UW and open to exploring that UW degree at different campuses, I'd highly encourage you all to check out Bothell and Tacoma in addition to Seattle. Um, you do have to apply to each one separately. And I think while we have a lot of similarities in terms of those essays, I would make sure that the essay prompts that Bothell and Tacoma are asking for um, are at least similar or the essay that you write for Seattle could work for them. So regardless if we're in the same UW system, just make sure the essay you write answers the prompt for the institution itself. Um, but Alex, we had a question. Um, if UW is my first choice and I would like UW to know where would I fit that in? Um, but I was wondering if you could answer that question as well as speak to, um, I guess, if we consider demonstrated interest. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if I can talk about demonstrated interest first, I'm really glad that you brought that up. Those of you who aren't familiar with the term, demonstrated interest to admission professionals means um, that we can consider basically any way that you've interacted with us, we can consider that in the admission process. So have you gone to a tour? Great, you know, that we can consider that. Have you uh, emailed uh, with us or gone to certain websites or done an admissions interview? We can consider that. Now I say we, but that's super misleading. We don't consider demonstrated interest. Other colleges may, um, so it's always a good question to ask, but the University of Washington does not consider demonstrated interest in the admissions process. So if UW is your first choice, that's fantastic. Um, it's not necessarily going to play, um, any demonstrated interest uh, that you've shown is not gonna play a role in the admission process. That being said, it's a good opportunity for you in any of your essays. Um, I would say maybe the longer essay or even the shorter essay, but the longer essay makes a lot of sense to say, why is UW a, a good fit? Um, you know, we, we definitely can consider um, things like major. So if you know that you want to study biology at UW and you've been preparing for this for uh, a long time and you know you can show us um, extracurriculars and, and make an argument about that. I mean, that's that's absolutely something that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's good to write about for sure. But in terms of actual like interacting with us, it's not going to make a difference in the application. Does that answer the question? I know, and you can probably provide more insight too as well, but hopefully that answers it. Yeah, absolutely. And I always think about it like we are so excited that you all are here tonight. We're so excited to see you all in person on campus. Um, we don't consider that as part of the application process. Same thing. Like we're all excited when you email us and ask those questions and you're interested in UW, but not considered in the application process. So feel free to take advantage of those resources for yourself, um, but don't feel like you have to do it um, just to be admitted to the UW, not something we consider. Um, let me see, Avelica, I know we didn't talk about this too much, but um, activity log, um, question was like, how many activities should I list? But I was wondering if you could just talk about kind of what we look for, like depth versus breadth um, of activities or quantity versus quality, I guess. Yeah, so my, you know, we are new to the common application. So if I'm wrong on the amount of activities you're allowed to list, I apologize. I believe it's eight is our uh, activities maximum, right? I think like eight or 10 between that number. In either case, uh, you are welcome and encouraged to list all the activities you've taken part in. Again, this can include um, clubs, sports. Uh, I always bring up drama, but you know, if you were involved in some sort of theater, really anything that you've been doing, it could be a summer program. Um, it could be a program that you participated in with UW, um, which we definitely want you guys to write about. Uh, we're always hoping to shout out our uh, colleagues. Um, if you also have participated in any of our events um, through Multicultural Outreach and Recruitment, we want to vote about that too. Um, child care, again, additional responsibilities that take up your week's time. Um, please make sure to include all of that in your extracurriculars. What's really important to note, though, in that activities log um, is that we are looking for more depth. Uh, so that means longer periods of time, as well as more responsibilities taken with those programming. Um, don't think that you have to do a million summer programs to be considered a like standout applicant. While it is great, we do want to see more length of time um, with whatever you are listing. So again, the things that are truly affecting your day-to-day -day experience, that again just gives us more context to what it looks like to be a student in your shoes with all the things that you have going on in your life, which is why it's important to include that activity section. Um, I hope that answers the question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I, I double checked um, 10 activities on the Common application. I believe I said eight earlier. I apologize. Um, we are new to the Common app. Um, but anyways, thanks so much, Avelica. That helps a ton. Um, Alex, I found a good question in here and then I scrolled past it, I found it again. Um, question was, does your personal essay need to be unique or will it 
um, or will it or, or will it being basic hurt your chances at all? Um, I know Avella could kind of touch on this a little bit, but I think it was a good question and would love to hear your advice. Yeah, I mean, I I want to dig into the terms like unique versus basic because there's definitely lots of things to to think about there. In one sense, yes, your essay needs to be unique in terms of being authentic and honest, as Avelica was saying. Um, it's we want to understand who you are, and really for you, Dub specifically, we because we don't consider letters of recommendation. Um, your activities, experiences, and essays are really the only places where we get to, to find that out. So the more time um, you spend towards being authentic and honest, the, the better, um, the more that we can actually understand who you are um, and the limited time that we get to spend with you. Um, so in that sense, unique, yes. Now, in terms of like topic or things like that, um, or even like genre, you know, like wondering like, does unique mean I have to write about a topic that nobody has written about, or do I have to create a poem or a screenplay or something like that for my essay? Um, you absolutely do not need to do that. Um, you might hear other admission professionals uh, or people giving essay advice saying, don't write about sports, don't write about your mission trip, don't write about um, certain things. And I think in, in, in some cases um, that's coming because uh, those are more common topics that we get. And yeah, I mean, you definitely have challenges if you choose to write about some of those topics. But that being said, you can have a unique story that falls within those topics. Um, so even if you select a, a common topic, but write about it uniquely, that can be a key to a great essay. Great, thank you so much, Alex. Um, I know we have about five minutes or so left here. I know I was trying to pick out some more general questions. Um, I'm, I'm gonna do a few like very quick little housekeeping notes, just a lot of common questions. Um, Alex and Avelica, as I'm talking, if there's any other additional say like links that you all feel like folks wanna know or just questions you pick out that you wanna make sure you tackle, I'll pass it off to you all before we wrap up. But I guess kind of the first question, um, where's like, where's the recordings of these sessions? I will drop those links in in just a second. Um, they will live on our YouTube playlist. Um, and then those YouTube videos will be embedded within our on-demand videos page on our website. Um, so that's the first thing I just wanted to mention there. So you're welcome to rewatch this video prior to writing your essays there. Um, the second piece, I know we had some questions about different um, ways to engage with us, be it in-person or virtually, and I will drop this link. Um, we do have in-person tours on campus just about every weekday, um, as well as we will be offering a variety of virtual events, such as these Washington Wednesdays. I know we are planning on doing some um, application webinars throughout the fall. Um, so just keep that on your radar. Um, just by coming to Washington Wednesday today and registering, um, we will stay in touch about all future, um, like larger in-person or virtual events, um, be that our virtual Husky preview week, where we have different academic departments that come out, um, our application webinars that us as admissions counselors host, or those, um, say, larger events that we have on campus, such as our game day tour. So um, just something to keep on your radar that, yes, there are lots of opportunities to connect with us. Um, anyways, that's my quick nuts and bolts. Um, my very last thing I'll say is I know we talked about application timeline a bit, but again, the one and only application deadline for the UW is November 15th for the freshman application. So be sure to apply by then, as that is our one and only deadline. Um, but anyways, Alex, Avelica, are there any last questions that you all really wanted to answer that you found in that Q&A? Um, I think one that I just get a lot is uh, students seeing the prompt, tell us a story about your life and thinking that they can only write about one single experience that happened in their life. Um, again, that's kind of why I like to give it a chronological order uh, when it comes to giving you that outline of, you know, where did I come from? What obstacles have I been through? What does my community look like? And then, uh, you know, where do I see myself in the future? It really is a collaboration of experiences and all, how all those um, parts of yourself are kind of toppling into each other. So we do want to see, um, it's not necessarily a requirement. Don't take this as like, you have to write this exact essay. Write the essay you want to write. Write the essay that feels good to you. Um, but you know, try and include as much of your personal life into it as possible, um, especially if it's something that is affecting your academics, affecting, um, you know, your social interactions, just the things that you're keeping with you in the day to day. Um, that's the stuff that we want to know about, because again, it does paint us a better picture of who you are as a person. And especially when it comes to those challenges, um, there's a lot of things that you may not see as a challenge in your life or an obstacle in your life that does, you know, let us know, hey, this student 
was working overtime or hey the student did have a lot of responsibilities at home or maybe the student didn't have anything at all but they are still trying to push themselves to be a perfect student in their classroom um, you know that's the things that we want to know about so make sure to include just as much information as you can in all of those essay sections um, that are required uh, yeah I think that is it for me or I'll, I'll see if there's anything else just as we're getting in our last minutes Alex yeah, I, I saw a couple quick ones. So one, um, somebody wanted to clarify what I meant by composite score for SAT and ACT. That means um, the sum of, or I guess the average in some cases uh, for the ACT of the different subscores. So for the ACT, you have like four different sections and they take the average of that and that's your that's your total like composite score. For the SAT, you have two sections and they add those together and that's your composite score. So that's what I mean um, when I talk about composite. So hopefully that helps. One other thing too, that I saw somebody write about, um, they were wondering about the honors program. Um, and I think that's an important question to ask here because um, if you're interested in, in um, applying to the honors program, there's no separate application. You just check a box on, on our application that says, I would like to be considered for it. But there are two additional responses that will pop up when you do that. Um, uh, I don't, I know I'm putting you on the spot right here, uh, Ben. Oh, you got it. Perfect. Yeah. So definitely feel free to check out that link. Um, it'll give you more information about those responses. Um, okay. Sorry. Just one last thing when it comes to the formatting of these essays, I saw a couple of questions about this, you know, how formal do you want the essay to be? And then also what type of narrative format do you want to have with the essays? I would say for the personal statement and especially for the, or, and for the short response, um, definitely want to be a bit more narrative focus, a little bit more creative with your writing. Um, however, when it comes to the additional information section, so that's a COVID-19 um, response question, and then also the academic response section, those can be really straightforward. Um, and you can be just direct of this thing affected me. I do recommend maybe two sentences <laughs> um, if you are writing in that additional information section or the COVID response section, just again, to give us more info. Um, but you know, do try to have a bit more essay format um, use a lot of personal statements you know so like i my thing um i did this it, it affected me this way um remember it is supposed to be your story so um i always say you know use first person point of view when you're writing your essays um you can especially if you are writing about someone else just again make sure to loop it back to your own story um and how that affected you personally but it is six o'clock so ben i'll let you close this out Perfect. Thanks so much. Um, well, thank you all for joining us today. We appreciate all the great questions and we do apologize we were not able to get to all of them. Um, I know I put our email addresses up there a little bit earlier, so you're more than welcome to email us with those questions. Um, again, as admissions counselors, we will be um, out on the road actually and in person this upcoming fall and excited to connect with you all as students and families, um, be it at your high schools or through another virtual event. Um, but that is all we have for today. Thank you all so much for joining us and we hope to see you all down the road.